Welcome back to Politics Tonight. Thank you so much for staying with us. Our conversation tonight is focused on Benry State and the uproar over the sack of elected local government chairman in that state. And right now I am joined by the All Progressives Congress APC Chieftain, Daniel Onje. Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Daniel. Thank you so much. Right. Uh, welcome to Politics Tonight. But before we get to our core issues for tonight, let's start with governance in Bedouin State. It's been six months. How is the current administration doing? Pardon? How is the current administration doing? I want us to start this conversation with governance in Bedouin State. How well, is the, uh, the the current administration is doing very well. It's it has taken up very smoothly, and um, the Benue indigents are already feeling the impact of the deliverables from the government of Reverend Father Hyacinth earlier. In so many ways, uh, before the inauguration of Reverend Father earlier, is a notorious fact that is known to everyone in Nigeria that Benue workers were owed salary for several months at both local government and the state level. But as I speak to you here today, uh, Reverend Father Alia had been able to clear the backlog of uh, salary areas and um, also here he has since uh, began to also pay pensioners their pensions. So hitherto, the pensioners were left in a very, very hopeless situation. Quite a number of them even died in the process of respecting their due from the state. So uh, he's uh, brought, giving the Benue workers a new lease to life. And, um, everyone uh, seem to be very, very happy with uh, Reverend Father Heisen Alia. And beyond the salary and the pension payment, he has also initiated uh, new uh, innovatives to governance. And uh, these initiatives hold a lot of promises. Like you know, uh, there is time lag in policy formulation. Uh, it's an uh, economics term, the time lag, from starting from when the policy is pronounced and to its maturity. So uh, some policies have been pronounced and then the processes have commenced in terms of infrastructure, in terms of agriculture, in terms of the health sector, in terms of education. So um, we are just taking off in Benue State, and um, he's very much on track. And then we're very hopeful that at the end of the administration of Reverend Father Hyson earlier, Benue, the situation of Benue State will have been turned around. But you can see, you no longer hear about uh, headsmen, killings, and all of it. For us, it is a situation of when the righteous rules, the people rejoice. Indeed, a righteous man is on throne, and the Bene people are rejoicing. Mm -hmm. We are very hopeful that a lot will be achieved under the Reverend Father Hassan Alia administration. Thank you. Right. Also, how will you describe uh, the governor's style of leadership since he assumed office? Well, very astute. Uh, I commend him. He's done well in the political front. He's also done well uh, in the act of uh, governance. All the institutions of government have been activated. Quite a number of them went moribund under the previous administrations. It was indeed... Uh, a wasteful years in the period, the entire period of the PDP, while the PDP held sway in the state. Uh, aside the tenor of uh, 
Senator George Akume, while he was the governor, talking about the current SGF. Aside from his time when the Benue witnessed uh, development and I felt the impact of governance, the two other governors that came after Senator George Akume were indeed uh, a historic mistake and blunder because we wasted uh, the entire period of 16 years in the state without any meaningful uh, development, without a commensurate development on ground to justify the humongous sums of money that have passed through the coffers of the state. Uh, public funds were uh, being fleeced away with every level of impunity and um, nobody seemed to be held responsible for all of this, uh, especially the last eight years of uh, uh, Governor Samuel Otom's uh, administration. We are yet to see any or point to any development on ground in Benue State. There is nothing anywhere. And that is what the situation uh, Reverend Father Heisen Ali has come to rescue. Uh, before his coming, like I mentioned earlier, Benue State was indeed enmeshed in a plethora of social, political, and economic quagmire. But gradually, the administration of uh, Father Heisen Alia is promising to bring us out of the woods. So because the governor rode on popularity to win, to win his election, how will you describe his relationship with the people so far? Well, fantastic. Uh, the state actors and even the indigents understand clearly that the clergyman is only here to salvage the situation or to rescue the situation in the state. Is a man who is committed, uh, is public spirited, and before even contesting and winning the governorship position in the state, he's been very, very down to earth with the people, very accessible, the masses, you know, visit him for prayers and counseling. And he has also carried that over to the government house. He's operating an open door uh, policy, even though uh, this is a different ball game. His schedule has become uh, tighter, and then I want, also want to seize the opportunity to crave the indulgence of people to uh, understand with him because it's really not easy. Uneasy, like they say, lies the hairs that wear the crown. But so far, so good. Uh, he's been doing well. He's doing well. Right. So let's now get to this uh, very serious issue that's been on since the beginning of the year. And it's this controversy over the sack of local government's chairman. There's been this uh, forth and back over this issue. What's the true picture of things now? Well, first of all, let me clarify this impression that is being given, which I feel is uh, a very, very wrongful impression, and I think uh, it's deliberate to mislead the people for whatever reason that the Senate minority, minority uh, leader, you know, distorted the facts as presented before or on the floor of the Senate. And it is important that I also seize this opportunity to advise the legislature to thoroughly scrutinize and investigate bills and motions that are brought before them in the course of their deliberations so that they are not hoodwinked by self-serving and personal interests of some persons who are the proponents of such bills that can lead to national embarrassment to them like we are witnessing right now. Yes, indeed, the bill sponsored by uh, Senator Abamoru uh, 
is impregnable and um, at best can be described as a wild goose chase because the action of the Senate on the bill is on ultravised. They overstep their bounds. They, as, they ascribe powers to, to themselves which they do not have, which is not inherent in them. Uh, basically, I said he distorted the fact and misled the Senate because his assertions are not correct. In the first place, he said the elected uh, executives of the local government were dissolved. There was no such thing as dissolution. The governor did not dissolve the uh, local, elected local government officials. Now, it is important we, we go over the, or we appreciate the background to all of these things so that we can clear the air once and for all now that we have the opportunity. These local government officials approach the courts before Reverend Father Heisen Alia was sworn in, asking the, raising certain questions before the court in an anticipatory order, meaning that they were up to a game. On the very day the judgment was delivered or to be delivered, they by themselves approached Reverend Father Heisen Alia, sought audience with him, and presented the income and expenditure report. So upon perusing, the governor and his team discovered a lot of uh, discrepancies and inconsistencies in their claims, the claims in their reports, and they forwarded the report to the State House of Assembly, to the State Assembly, sorry. And the State Assembly also, uh, having uh, gone through it and embarked on a very robust debate, they did their preliminary findings and discovered that indeed there was a lot of wrath in the local government. So they referred the report to the adult committee of the assembly, which also carried out further investigation, including going into the field to uh, assess the capital projects, some of the social interventions, the local government uh, chairman, the advice, and even the legislature at the local government level claim to have embarked on or executed. But what was discovered after the several billions of taxpayers' monies that have gone into the coffers of the various local governments in the 23 local government there was nothing on ground to justify government spending or to show the value for government spending. So the elected chairman, the so-called elected chairman, in quote, were invited to come and answer some questions. But they absconded and sent the DGSs of the local government, which are the Director General of uh, uh, Services and Administration, the Treasurer of the local government, and the cashier, to come and represent them. And in law, once you are invited by any commission or committee of inquiry, and you send a representative or you appear in proxy, it is taken that you've appeared before the authorities, which is the case with the elected officers that were invited by the adult committee. And after the interactions and the questioning, a lot of uh, further revelations were discovered. And that was when the House, in its wisdom, that has the competent jurisdiction to legislate on issues of local government, recommended the suspension, 
the suspension, not dissolution. They recommended the suspension of these local government officials that were alleged of financial impropriety, misappropriation, and misconduct. More so that the House of Assembly had established a prima facie case against them. So it went ahead to recommend to the executive, which is the governor, to suspend them and constitute a caretaker committee. That is the situation. And again, he also said that there's a subsistent judgment which has not, which, whose order has not been obeyed or honored, and the judgment had not been appealed. And that is also another barefaced lie. We do apology. Because the judgment which they got from the industrial court in Makodi to the extent that an order was granted to them, preventing the state government from dissolving the ESCOs, preventing the state assembly from dissolving the ESCO. But of course, the court recognized the, 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 the competence of the House of Assembly to suspend them using the due process. And that was the step that was taken by the House of Assembly to recommend their suspension. The governor did nothing wrong. He was only trying to uh, observe and appreciate the separation of power between the executives, the legislature, and the judiciary. And an attempt to go contrary to the recommendation of the State House of Assembly that is vested with the powers by the law which the State House of Assembly enacted in 2007 that was amended in 2012 which empowers the state House of Assembly, which is portion to Section 7, Subsection 1 of the Nigerian Constitution, that empowers the state House of Assembly in Benue State to investigate the local government officials, which was exactly what they did. So, having done that, what was left of the governor is to uh, carry out the recommendations of the state House of Assembly. That was what he did. He did absolutely oh. nothing wrong. The National Assembly has no power whatsoever to, legis to legislate on matters concerning the local government administration. The only exception here is the Federal Capital Territory, which is the SCT. And that is because the SCT uh, lacks a state assembly that legislates. And this means that it is where there's absence of state assembly that the National Assembly steps in to perform their function. So the Constitution is clear about it. They have no role to play on local government administration. They can't legislate on the issue of local government. So you can see the approach Senator Abba Mori is using uh, is more or less a window dressing. The fact is that majority of the senators who were former governors had the opportunity to influence the state has their various state house of assembly to endorse the uh, the 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 the, uh, the, the law the amendment which the National Assembly pursued in the Ninth Senate, and we must com commend the Ninth Senate. Indeed, they showed commitment for local government autonomy, but their effort was frustrated at the state assembly level. And some of these governors who just uh, rounded up their tenure are in Senate now, you know, who ordinarily would get their state uh, uh, assembly to do their, the bidding of their interests, but failed to persuade or convince 
the state assembly to endorse the local government autonomy. So anything outside the local government autonomy is just window dressing. It will be effort and futility. The issue that Senator Abamoru uh, made heavy weather of, uh, making or creating mountain out of a molehill, amounts to nothing because it is basically a cosmetic approach. In all principle, right, so all you have narrated. In principle, uh, Mr. Daniel, I mean, everything you've narrated indicated that the council chairman was sacked over alleged financial impropriety. And you've said this evening that they were not uh, dissolved, they were suspended. But then, is this enough to remove them from office? Because reports out there are saying that uh, the governor has done this or the state assembly has done this because these are not members of his party. Is this enough to remove the recommendation, them from office? The recommendation is that they are suspended indefinitely. They are suspended pending, pending the conclusion of the investigation. And they accept the... State Assembly has recommended that the governor forward the matter to anti graft agencies like the ICPC and EFCC for further uh, investigation. And the process of that is on. These are local government chairmen and the executive who ought to be cooling off in the correctional center by now. If you see the scale of uh, the scale of uh, the, 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 the conspiracy, the grand conspiracy to Mr. Daniel, the, you didn't the, answer the my deed question. in shortchanging in short the Benue indigent. Right, so my question was, is this enough to remove them from office? That's the question. Is this enough to remove them from office? Yes, the, the, the state assembly is vested with the power to investigate the local government officials. They acted within the purview of their powers. And they, they have the power to carry out oversight function, which is what they have done. And that is how the system ought to be working in Nigeria. Now, if they had recommended to the executive that they be suspended and a caretaker be constituted, what else do you want the uh, uh, very Reverend Father, the, His Excellency Governor Heisen Alia, to do in this circumstance? All right. will, you suggest, will you suggest that he runs the state with sole administrator, just like uh, former governor of Anambra, Peter Obi did for over six years, he ran the state with sole administrators without conducting elections. All right, I get that. When... So while the state government, Mr. Daniel, while the state government uh, as the night sacking the council chairman, I mean, you've also corroborated that statement tonight. They have dragged the administration to court. How will you describe the impact of this on the policy in the states? Well, it's been a very welcome development. The indigents that know exactly what they have suffered or the injustice that have been meted out at them, they are quite celebrating the suspension of these local government uh, executives and the legislative arm because this is going to uh, pave a way for rapid and accelerated development of the state. You agree with me that several billions of uh, taxpayers' money are committed to the coffers of the local government. Like, for instance, in Vandekia local government of Benue State, where over 900 million was allocated to the local government in three months. And the salary wage bill for the local government workers for the three months is less than 100 million. But what act of callousness?
worker salaries were not paid in the local government for the three months. The governor only asked them to put forward report from April to from uh, February to April. And when he forwarded the report which these local government officials uh, submitted to him, when he forwarded it to the state assembly, the state assembly extended it to one year. And what was discovered there is an eyesore. None of them has come out to deny the facts, that the, of the, the fact of their culpability and complexity in the allegation against them. Rather, they are running around trying to cut corners to get justice where uh, they do not even deserve. Because the court which they approach is the industrial court. Industrial court lacks, do, does not have the judicial competence to advocate on the issue of elected officials. They can only advocate on issues of employed officials. So in the first place, the court they approach, they wrongly approach it, and they even went to court trying to hit the government of uh, Governor Alia below the belts by laying an ambush for the new administration. They approached the court challenging the executive under the leadership of Governor Samuel Otom. It's unthinkable that local government chairman who were elected under Governor Samuel Otom would take him to court because, of course, they know what they were looking for and they knew what they were up to. They wanted to hurriedly get the judgment to protect them so that they can come and remain and continue to fleece public funds. And these are the people Senator Abamori is asking that they be returned. I think right. it's just uh, the bill is, is, is better described as a partisan bill. I say so because this is the first time that him, Senator Abamoru, is going to lose grip of his local government for a very long time. He had enjoyed the, the way the local government administration was being run, even though, yes, he was an elected local government chairman at some point, but a major part of his stay there, he was a caretaker chairman as well. And even as a sitting senator in the ninth Senate, with a sitting PDP uh, governor in person of Samuel Otom, they considered a caretaker committee for the local government and we know who produced the caretaker committee chairman in the Okoku local government, which is the local government of Senator Alba Moro. He didn't see the need to complain at that time in the Senate, to condemn it. He condoned it. But now that it does not suit him, suddenly he became Massey's advocate and advocating for, uh, for, right. for the deepening of democracy and good governance in Nigeria. That is very right. misleading. Nobody was dissolved. They were only suspended until pending the conclusion of the investigation. As soon as so the investigation is concluded and, so and they are given a big, clean bill of health and their tenure is still remaining, they can come back to office and continue. But as it is today, as I speak with you, the House, the State House has endorsed the list of the caretaker committee that was submitted to them by the right. governor. And we'll the, care, the caretaker committee have been inaugurated today. Right. So we'll get to that. But first, for the purpose of clarity, you just said that uh, the chairman were, in your words, suspended indefinitely by the State House of Assembly and not Governor Alia. So for the purpose of clarity, uh, who leveled the allegation of financial... I said they recommended. The State House recommended. They didn't suspend. They recommended. They don't have the powers to do that. So but they have question, the power to recommend. Andy, hold on. My question is, who leveled the allegation of financial impropriety against the council chairman? Pardon? Now, you just said that the chairman was sacked by the State House of Assembly, or rather, uh, suspended indefinitely by the State House of Assembly and not Governor Ali. Not by the but State House of Assembly. The State House of Assembly recommended their suspension to the... All right to the executive governor of the state and he carried out their 
resolution. He implemented a resolution by suspending them. So they were suspended for grand conspiracy and acting in cohorts with the legislative arm of the local government to fleece and plunder public funds, taxpayers' funds. And that is what the government of Father Alia seeks to redress. And rest assured so this is my that question. going forward with this caretaker committee, who leveled, that who Benue that State is going to witness a very rapid development in the state. All right, so this is my question. Who leveled the allegation of financial impropriety against the council chairman? Well, uh, as with all new administrations, for any government who is what is sought and knows his onions, as soon as you resume office, you demand for income and expenditure reports. And that was exactly what the government did. They submitted it, and they were, like I said, there were a lot of inconsistencies in it, discrepancies in it. And the, gov the, 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 the governor had to forward the report through his chief of staff to the state house of assembly that have the competence to investigate, which they carried out. And it was the outcome of the investigation and resolutions that was being executed by the governor. All right, Mr. Daniel, let's take a break. I've been speaking with the chieftain of the All Progressives Congress, APC, Daniel Onja. Tonight, we focused on Benway politics and uh, the uproar over the sack of elected local government chairman in that state. We'll take a break and I'll be right back. Please stay with us.